I come from a land of rich culture, rich traditions. We pride ourselves in our royalty. People from my land will always call themselves Otikokoswanana. That means the grandchild of the one who sits on the golden stool. That is the Ashanti kingdom in Ghana. But this morning, I am not talking about my Ashanti kingdom, and I'm not talking about my country, Ghana. I'm talking about my African story. When I was a child, my mom told me a story about great men that she grew up admiring, her grandfather and his best friend. She said any time she wakes up, she waited in anticipation for these two men to do their normal shouting. Pan-Africa, progressive. Pan-Africa, progressive. Meanwhile, she didn't even know what they meant. And it never made sense to her. She was barely eight years old. And that was before the first coup d'etat that saw the overthrow of the first president of the Republic of Ghana, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah who happened to be the Pan-Africanist icon. My mom's story prompted me to ask questions, to read about the Pan-African ideals without any clear strategies to get this Pan-African dream. So in my high school days, in university days, I kept asking my friends. Some really didn't care, some knew less, Others thought it was a very big dream, whilst others also thought that maybe, just maybe, gradually we might get there, but it will not be now. But it was through one of these conversations with a Motuanan brother, Ronald, here at KDI, and the special lecture I attended by Dr. Sangung Han, I hope I got the name right, when he uh, touched on the Singapore story, their success story, and that of Korea, that I was prompted to speak on economic integration of Africa before its political unification. The Pan-African ideals looks at the homogenizing of the whole African continent into one big country, one president, one government, one culture, one voice, maybe one language. And I have been wondering what language that we'll be speaking. Is it Swahili by the people in the South or Iroba? Uh, can you help me with some, the African students here? Uh, uh, exactly. So I don't know which one we are going to agree on. Or maybe because we may not be able to come on agreement we might just consider to choose one of the colonizers' language, which in a way defeats our purpose of existence. Now, as someone who is passionate about learning cultures and open to new knowledge, where do I stand in all these? What do I think of all these? And most importantly, where does everything connect? And for me, it starts from the basic block, building it together, connecting it together to form something bigger. I have and will always be for the economic integration of Africa, first, before any homogenized Pan-African state. I will always be for the economic integration of Africa, but I know that is not going to come by easily. You see this glass? This is what Pan-Africa looks at. A broken glass, putting everything together. Do we think this is possible if we do not go through the gradual process? It is going to be difficult indeed. We have struggled to achieve this far. That is true. Why is this so? Because the very fiber of our being, our language, our culture, our diversity, and even our population, the individual populations of the countries have been ignored. We believe in democracy, and we might go for an election to elect the president of the United States of Africa. 
but then we have not considered the population of the various states. So imagine the Botswana state that have less than 5 million people presenting a candidate that they think this is the best. And then Nigeria is like, we are 140 million. We can't wait for you to come bring someone to come and rule us. Do we think this is going to work? You know, so whilst I was thinking about this, my African dream, I remember the video of David Cameron, former Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, I watched somewhere in 2014. And David Cameron addressing the EU in 2013, stressed on the fact that they should maintain their diversity, their language, their culture, or else the union they are looking for is not going to work. And the second president of South Africa, Thabo Mbeki, he even popularized this the more, and he said, Africa's development, for Africa's development to go on, we have to focus on economic integration. So I have been asking myself, for the past 60 years, we started AU. For the past 60 years, we were on the quest of becoming United States of Africa. Why have we failed? Why have we failed to make any meaningful showing? Where has everything gone wrong? Well, there are some hardcore Pan-Africanists, and they think that Africa can only sit at the table with the big guys, like US, Japan, China, South Korea. If we go as one country, not as smaller countries with small population, because our GDP alone cannot even be compared to that of Beijing. Then I ask myself, what is the population of Norway? Just a little bit above five million. Yet, they have meaningful economic conversations with the United States. What about Saudi Arabia? What about Qatar? I know some of us will say, they sit on the world's oil, so you cannot leave them out. But Africa has wealth of minerals. Don't we have cash crops? And most importantly, we have a large young population that I think we are the envy of the world. So then where is the problem? Why is it that we've not been able to get there? We've seen the Asian tigers. In fact, I'm experiencing a stage right now in one of the Asian Tigers. Did we ever hear of United States of Asia? I guess not. And I know most of us have given these a thought. For me, instead of looking at sitting at the big table with the big guys, I think we must first assess our current state of affairs. And most importantly, we must assess who we truly are. Africa has failed to connect with the fact that although we are different in background and in cultures, we are one in spirit. And it is in this oneness of spirit that we must begin to find the genuine differences and the commonalities that we share. It is in this oneness of spirit that we must begin to build our countries from. It is in this oneness of, uh, oneness of spirit that we must celebrate each other's diversity and fashion our development from there. We may get there one day before we ever get there in our lifetime, I think that we should focus on the economic integration before any political unification. I was reading a paper by Oliver Blackley in 2011, and he gave a vivid description of the European Union. I don't know why I'm so enthused about the European Union, but I think it is working, and therefore, if ever, we want to have a solid union. If ever we want to make AU stronger on trade and economic issues, maybe we should take a cue from there because they also started the same process. Somewhere 
in the 60s. It's over 60 years now that they started. Oliver Blackley described the European Union as one with a single market, one with a judicial system, and one with an intergovernmental, and I stress on the word intergovernmental organizations. And for 60 years, we have seen the fruition of what they started. Before we achieve one Africa, if we will ever get there, I ask again, we must first accept that we will never develop without paying attention to our diversity because that is where everything connects. And if we would ever want to get that one Africa someday, which I know is going to be a, a very long time, we will wait for that long. We must focus on these five things. Accommodating our cultures and fostering development along those lines. We must also focus on calibrating growth enhancing policies. An open market is the way to go. You know, when I was coming to Korea, there were issues of Nigerian traders having problems trading in Ghana because the Ghanaian traders thought that the Nigerian traders are taking over the market. I, for one, was against what my Ghanaian brothers were doing. And we all know the relationship between Nigeria and Ghana. We are the closest in West Africa. Yet, when it came to trade, we could not accommodate them. And that is what we should focus on, an open market, where we can trade not just within West Africa, but go beyond West Africa to other parts of Africa without any problem. Then we'll begin to think of that one country, Africa. And the third one is, we must focus on promoting stability and peace across the region. There are pockets of violence, pockets of instability across the region. Sometimes we sit unconcerned. There is uh, a parlance in my country that says, Jiufiasam. I believe Sam knows that phrase very well. Mind your home business. We are sitting down minding our home business, and we are still dreaming of a big Africa. I think it was just some two weeks ago that the president of Nigeria, Muhammadu Buhari, led a team of president to Mali to mediate uh, between them, the Mali government and the rebels in the north. I've been following that story, but I don't know how far it's gone. If we cannot promote peace, if we cannot stand for each other in these trying times, do we ever think the one African country will become a reality? The fourth thing is removing obstacles, especially cross-border restrictions. It will interest you to know uh, that last year I wanted to travel to Tunisia for a conference and there was no consulate of Tunisia in Ghana. Surprising, right? I had to travel all the way to Nigeria for the nearest consulate just to travel to another African country. And yet, we think we can become one country just to sit at the table when we have all these restrictions on. Ghana to Tunisia. And I, don't, I didn't even know which flight I was going to take. Where I'm going to land and all the transit. Meanwhile, if you just look up the map, you see Tunisia just up there and Ghana down there. Yet all these restrictions. And finally, we have to focus on removing the bane of African governments. Corruption is our bane. We can't even fight it at the individual level. Do we think that whilst we refuse to fight corruption at the individual levels, we may ever be able to come together as one country? I don't know about you. An economically unified Africa will never become a reality. If we keep aiming at the United States of Africa, and keep ignoring the very basic building blocks where everything connects. 
as African policy makers here at KDI, I know some of us are here. Let us begin to deepen the conversation on our diversity. Let us begin to push for more trade liberalization across the continent. It is time we make each other stronger through good governance before we think of a bigger body. And there is this South African word that interests me so much. Ubuntu, I am because you are. And I will personalize it and say, Africa will be if each country is. Thank you. Thank you.